Perfect. And there's an opportunity here to tr- tie this into your neuro network here. Um, as we start to think about brain and the neurotransmitters that would ultimately go on to create neurologic signaling and balance and homeostasis in our brain, we think a lot about things like serotonin and dopamine. Serotonin, uh, let's take that as an example. Some 90% of the serotonin made in the human body is not made in the brain, but in the human intestinal lining. In that uh, production center is the enteric endocrine cells. So there's these little, about 10 to 15% of the cells that line your, or compose the lining of your gut are not epithelial cells that are barrier boundary cells responsible for protection and absorption. They're instead endocrine cells. And those 10 to 15% of those billions of cells that are endocrine cells are the manufacturing plant for serotonin. So there again, we find, okay, the brain is not really the brain. It's maybe the second brain. And the primary brain is really in, in regard to kind of an information stream and manufacturing is maybe the gut lining. So we've, we've been arguing over is the brain the first brain and this is the second brain or vice versa with some of our colleagues in recent years. And, and it's a fun debate because we start to you know, realize, wow, there's so much information flowing out of the gut up towards the north here. And so it turns out there's uh, for every 10 parts of information exchanged between the gut and the brain, nine parts are information flowing up and one part is information flowing down. And so from, from a sheer information volume, it's clear that the gut is, dominates this, this relationship between gut brain. But it gets more complex and gets into this microRNA situation when we start to realize that the enteric endocrine cells can't actually produce serotonin unless the correct species of bacteria is sitting on the, enter- on the uh, gut side of that cell. And so you have to have a direct influence and relationship between the secretions of a bacteria and that enteric endocrine cells before you can get the production of of serotonin. And so I think this is just a very direct way of saying, if you take an antibiotic, you're going to screw up your production of serotonin and dopamine, and therefore you're going to predispose yourself to uh, a collapse of mood stability or uh, cognitive capacity. And in fact, we can prove that, and it's been published many times now. There's a couple of great studies uh, showing that one course of antibiotics leads to somewhere around about a 17% increase in risk of anxiety uh, disorder in the next 12 months. And for major depression, it's a 24% increase in risk of, of disorder within the next 12 months. If you get two courses of antibiotics or more in that 12-month period, then your risk of major depression goes up by 45%. Risk of uh, anxiety disorder is around 40%. And so this huge increase in risk by disrupting the microbiome that would be secreting microRNA and other precursors for your serotonin delivery by disrupting that microbiome. Welcome to the Collective Insights Podcast, where we explore topics and technologies revolutionizing human well-being. On today's episode, Dr. Zach Bush returns to the podcast and joins our medical director, Dr. Dan Stickler, to explore the astounding new research on gut health, including a new insight on something we've all been doing wrong for decades. Make sure to subscribe to Collective Insights wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode.